Mike. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's gone. Mike, are you starting with an agenda? Or are yeah. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> Here's the agenda. Yep. Okay, so uh, could you please call the attendance? In order, we're here. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, uh, so we'll go over a couple uh, things today. We'll probably not get through all because I want to make sure we wrap up within an hour. Um, first of all, we have a new face on the commission, uh, Kelly mm -hmm. Lean, uh, owner uh, Rogers you. Bakery. Thank you. Uh, she is replacing Jay Snow, who moved to uh, Portland metro area. So I don't know if you want to say anything. Or I, I'm a newbie. I, this is so, uh, yeah, I'm going to learn. And just tell us you're not moving to Portland. I'm not moving to Portland. No, I'm pretty well. <laughs> I'm here. She for just the has to bring donuts to everybody. Yeah, I was waiting for that one. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll be moving to Rogers Bakery. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, welcome. Uh, we'll be going Thank over you. a couple of items tonight. Uh, first one's a, a local investment network. Uh, Mr. Join Campions here from uh, Washington State University. Uh, extension and tell us a little more about that. Uh, then uh, item three is uh, talking about how we'll distribute the LSMX tool licenses. When we get to that item, I will say a little bit of what that is uh, okay. so that way you know. And then the other item we'll make sure to touch over tonight is the events. I'm not exactly sure we'll get to the tail end of the items. Uh, so that's what we'll definitely go over. I just want to go over a couple of things as far as housekeeping before I turn it over to Jordan. Uh, October 4th, there's open house at the high school at 5.30 for their B57 program. Uh, Thursdays through the end of uh, this month, the farmer's market keeps going from 4 to 7 p.m. in the parking lot. Uh, we have our standard planning and historic preservation commission meetings on October 17th and 19th, respectively. Uh, October 20th, we're having an Arbor Day tree planting at Kiwanis Park at 10 a.m. Uh, October 22nd is a ribbon cutting because Kiwanis Park has been completely rehabbed. That'll be at 11 a.m. Uh, we have the park board October 27th. October 30th, coffee with the mayor will be at the Atlas Coffee House at 5 p.m. And then uh, Halloween, we have an event going on. Hopefully we'll be able to get a lot of the businesses in addition to what's going on at the city to participate. And we'll get into Halloween a little bit later. Uh, so with that, I would like to turn it over to Jordan. Thank you guys for having me here. Um, I have one quick handout that actually sums up everything I'm going to say. So oh, I think that that out of it's that flyer you gave me. Uh, well, my was tied up in my uh, WSU extension. Uh, I work in our economic development department. I'm our statewide economic development. I don't even know what it really means, except for I drive around the state and help locals and mostly rural communities stimulate opportunities for their businesses. It's kind of what four years has summed up. One of the problems we kept running into was we'd come up with these great ideas, especially out of high school, we would try to get some uh, people that just graduate, stay in the community, start a business. Well, we couldn't find financing for them. And we went to work, tried to work with the local banks, the bigger bank, every bank or lending institution, just couldn't find it. And so there was a program, I don't know how many have heard of it, it's the Lion Network out of Port Townsend. Uh, local Investment Opportunity Network is what it stands for. And what they did said was, well, if no banks are going to come in, we're going to try to do this locally. And so they got a group of residents to be able to invest in their local businesses and to the tune of almost $2.7 million. And so what it works like is just like a bank. So businesses come in, they, uh, through this network, they say, hey, this is what I do. I just started a bakery in, on Main Street, and we're, we really need another 25000 to get the equipment so we can start servicing all the school's needs. Well, new bakeries, the bank's still going to say, yeah, you really don't have the track record, or that's not a good fit. Well, what we can do is now find an interested resident um, to come in, fund it, get returns. And like in Port Townsend, they funded a creamery, and he was paid, the uh, investor was paid dividends in cheese. So still got their money back, but was paid through a much more creative way. And I mean, I, we just refinanced our house, and I don't think I literally saw a person. I was trying to go through the whole process in my head, but everything was online. What you 
seen as a shift from now your what's on paper has to qualify or you don't qualify instead of the sit down in front of you invest in me as a, as a person and what we found was how, why can't we switch it back to that so we launched this site about two and a half years ago we started with Chewila Washington Squim Washington uh, Davenport Washington and then ultimately added Thurston County and uh, the entire county so that's a population of 269,000 all the way down to Davenport which I believe is close to 1200 and what we wanted to see was how much interest is there well Every community except for Davenport jumped on board with it. So the groups in two years have lent over, over essentially have committed almost two and a half million dollars of local money to invest. And we thought, okay, this could work. And so we spent the time and money and and worked with the Department of Financial Institutions, who's a regulatory body to build out all of our forms, work with attorneys, and now it's kind of a plug and play package. And I go around kind of just doing a kickoff of, hey, is this something that you would see as a complementary product that you could offer for your businesses? Typically, I work with an extension professional, uh, EDC, that's already doing kind of that similar work, but the first conversation always starts at, starts at the top, <laughs> uh, at who would be interested. So, go ahead, yeah, interrupt me anytime. So, do specific people in the community just loan to specific projects, or is there a pool of money that they draw from? So, uh, we've done both. So, it's designed to be a specific person to a specific business, Cuts out a lot of red tape, cuts out the issues of, of who decides where it goes once you do have a pool. Now it's you sitting there, similar to this actually, you're sitting there as an investor and saying, hey, this person wants to start a coffee shop and they're going to have high speed internet. It's, we need that in our community. And now you could make a difference by investing in this company. And who knows the market better than people living in the market? Of what, what would thrive there? I mean, the fifth Froyo shop just went out. We probably don't want to put that there. But a coffee shop would make sense. And most people ask, well, why do you even need this anyway? Can't I just go give my money to whoever I want to give my money to? And the reality is, is no. Um, they have uh, the SEC back in 1937 passed the Securities and Exchange Law, which was designed to protect actually grandmas from getting sold swampland in Florida. And there was with no disclosures. And so they passed this law that says if you're accredited, which means you're worth a million dollars, or you make 200,000 as a single individual, or 300 as a married couple which is 1% of our population, you don't have to have what's called disclosure from a business. The other 99% have to receive a packet of information from any business that is asking for investment um, that ranges anywhere from five to $50,000 to create. Well, every business I've worked with, they, they are looking for $10,000, so the concept of spending 10,000 to get 10,000 just never made sense, and that's what this program is designed to do. And we usually partner with the local banks because it's a complimentary product, meaning they go into the bank and says no, or maybe they come here, get the startup funding they need to then transition into a bank loan. So it's not really seen as competitive, it's actually just seen as another kind of quiver or bow or arrow in the quiver, I guess to, to put it. So I know I met Michael when I did a presentation at the Association of Washington Cities Conference, and we've had generated a lot of interest. Our goal is to take it statewide, um, so you could even possibly at one point have networks working with other networks. But what we found is it actually engaged a part of the population um, that we were missing, because we kept using charity as our motivator. Now we use greed as our motivator, and it actually brings a lot more people to the door. And so it's kind of switched the mentality a little bit. But I thought I could come down, answer any questions, if, see if it was something you think could be a fit. If not, no, no pressure with it. It was just more introducing the concept. You say you partner with banks, uh, and, and you know, say a loan isn't approved, so you go to this step. From that point forward, who is in charge of you know enforcement? Isn't the right word, but just you know, servicing of servicing the of the agreement. If there's an issue in repaying it, who, who is kind of the, the manager of that agreement? One of the key elements that comes with this is actually, a, it's an investor program, it's actually a benefit to businesses, but it's designed to be an investor program. So we've tried to provide a lot of education, we partner with local escrow companies that can actually do some of the notices, the filings, that stuff. What we haven't been able to solve, which I don't think the bank has really solved either, is what happens if they don't pay. What we found, though, and what Port Townsend found was their default rate. They had one default in six years, and it ended up getting paid back. They restructured the note, essentially. But it is the reason we call it an investment network. Um, and I'm very upfront in all of our documents and disclosures saying if you can't afford to lose the money or 
that this isn't the right project. What we found was there's still a percentage of the population that has a, a disposable income amount where they'd rather see it go to work here and get a return than put it again on, on Wall Street and see. So uh, the way we've tried to solve this, make this uh, formal and structure this process, but the reason it's great for cities, great for WSU, great for any entity, is that actually takes your, the liability off of us. And the goal is we truly are creating a network, much like you would a networking event or a or something where- It's like an angel investor. Just putting the people in the same room. And what we want to do is create more opportunities where a business can get in front of a group of people who want to help them. Yeah, I've heard about micro loan programs. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and my knowledge of this is, you know, an inch deep. But, yeah. but uh, that sounds more like a pool. A micro loan program would be you get a pile of money, and then people come and get five hundred to two thousand, four or five thousand dollars, something like that. Uh, but this is different. You're saying it's just person to person individual investor or two. An investor takes all the risk. Yeah. Investor takes all the risk and then the investor's motivated to do it. So what we found is that those investors are actually getting anywhere from a six to eight percent up to a ten percent return depending on the loan. So now they we actually have investors trying to host the next networking one to get more opportunities. As opposed to our micro loan or revolving loan programs, it's actually one of our most difficult tasks when I work with communities that have them is how do you staff them? Because all of those came with usually a stipulation that you provide technical assistance with it, and funding a tech, a truly a person that's qualified to do technical assistance, and it's usually fifty to sixty thousand. So this program is usually a great way. It's kind of just complimentary as well. You're already getting those same people in the room. It's another way to kind of just offer a new product for businesses who may have may have stopped at the first first initial rejection. So again, they're getting rejected by a bank. So they're not going to be your top tier candidates. But what we found is that actually most of the businesses that have come have been the baker that wants to expand. It's a lot less startups, which is what I thought it would be. It's the business that just wants the 25 to get to get to that next step. Is that a requirement to be rejected by a bank? So you can just yeah first step. You can come here directly. Okay. Uh, in Twist, Washington, we actually had a brewery that could have gotten bank financing, and they were expanding to a second location. Got fully funded by the investment network. And what they thought of it more like, you guys watch Shark Tank? Mm -hmm. yeah. They thought of it more like that. So the investors there became a strategic relationship for them. Mm -hmm. So to the brewery, so not only did they get the money, they got these advocates slash highly experienced, highly gift. I mean, the two people that invested have the experience to, to really grow that business. So um, it, it, it's taken a number of different forms, even from the inception of what we thought of as a concept, but really, really has been a great way to just promote that conversation of what, how do we keep more dollars local and see it work, not just I keep paying more for this item because I know Walmart carries it for half price. It's how do I how do I see it work and now they're getting a return on their money and then what's great for the business is kind of like a Kickstarter campaign or something where now the investor wants their investment, right? And so they're promoting it to all their friends and now who's picking up the bakery goods for the new business from the investor? It's, it's kind of been a indirect kind of a benefit we didn't see and then the natural mentoring that now goes on from it. It's not required, even though it's been required, we actually can require much of anything um, in the form of what the investor does. Just now you've invested in them and you've opened up the dialogue and so you have an experienced, um, usually an experienced investor now working with a business that otherwise couldn't afford that, that service. So, Is there, it sounds like the terms of repayment are pretty much up to the yeah. investor and the that's all it is. And, I, and what we've seen in some of the communities, like with the brewery, I believe they did an equity investment. So debt being, I give you 10,000, uh, you repay it to me at 10% interest. When it's paid off, where did that settle? Equity being, I give you 10,000, you give me 10% of your company, and you don't repay it. And so that's, we've actually seen two businesses get that kind of funding, which has been pretty neat. Um, and really helped grow them. So now it's a year later going back and already talking about a third location. So. That is Shark Tank. That is exactly Shark Tank. Yeah, it is. it's a little less, a little less vicious than Shark Tank. I'll tell you that. But it, it's been a cool. Like in Chewila, we did it, and it kicked off really well. We funded a brewery and a restaurant, I believe. Uh, but the mayor came in and did a state of business on Main Street Chewila because there was a few boarded up buildings and people were the mountain was looking to expand, but they weren't sure. And so it's just this unique timing for that, and now those businesses are doing pretty well. So it's been a, it's kind of fun to see the two years on the road. Would the state allow repayment in beer? Well, that's 
<laughs> so far, just asking for a friend. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I haven't played out the beer one. I always use it as an example, but nobody's ever questioned me on the legitimacy of that example. I assume if it was a gift card, you should be fine. <laughs> I don't know if the liquor control board would have a say in that. They would probably. Yeah. You know, they got, we did coins once and they got us on that. It did, yeah, oh, it's, really? it's a yeah. display on that one. So. But just another, again, more seen as another opportunity and thought, uh, worst case, I get a chance to, chance to present that. So. That's interesting. Yeah. And uh, what you have for you is just a simple one pager kind of pros, cons, just basics on it. But um, if you wanted something more, really our next committed step would be bringing a group of stakeholders who you think would be good investors or good champions of the project. And I can go much deeper on exactly what that could look like and, and how quickly, but it's really uh, as quick as you would want to turn something around. It's kind of built already. So. Yeah, I've yeah, done this in Oregon for quite a while. Yeah. Right? They do like pub talks where yeah. they'll bring investors in and people come in and pitch them. And you know, they sit around the pub. And, and that's, that? what, that's what we look for. Yeah, all over Oregon. They do that. Yeah. In Oregon, you said? Yeah. yeah, so that's kind of the goal with it is that we get it. So Thurston just did one at one of their open natural markets. And the three businesses that presented were all local growers or value add um, farmers. So it was kind of it was neat because it kind of tied, it was less in a formal setting like this. It was much more in a hey, everyone's networking. Let's take let's step aside, let them present, and then now let them network more. So it's been a, they've seen that they've seen their numbers grow in the attendance because it's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. It's just fun to go to. So so who does that networking? I mean, how does that? What's the sort of the process of recruiting or notifying, educating? Is it all just organic people who? Are interested in get, getting the money, or people interested in loaning the money, or both. both? So the initial, the initial one I ask of any community that wants to take it on is hopefully you had a pool of people that you just naturally think of that would be interested in hearing about the opportunity to invest locally uh -huh. in a way that was a little more structured than your hand cash across the table thing. And so that's how we start most of them. Uh, in your community, I can have any wall to wall, obviously, you could draw from. But you could do a college place specific one if you thought there was enough excitement, energy, and around building something here. Or you could just do a kind of a wall to wall community. Uh, and we would probably go to wall to wall community college and probably go to local colleges and see if they had some business kind of business typical courses where they're already producing businesses where they have a chance to hopefully the goal with some of this has been to have high school graduates creating a business that now keep them back locally. So they're not having to go somewhere else to build a business, build a career and then come back later. So to answer your question in a lot fewer words, uh, local EDCs, uh, yeah. local WSU extension and then because you have such a community college and college presence, college. So those would okay. be the three who would reach out to you. Yeah with kind of some guidance on who you This uh, process is, is very interesting, especially in this state, because in a lot of other places where I lived, uh, you have concepts that cities can do directly, such as like tax increment financing, urban renewal, and enterprise zones. And a lot of the traditional economic development tools that most areas depend on are actually constitutionally forbidden in the state of Washington. So you have to think out of the box like this. And uh, when I lived in the south suburbs of Chicago, there was a similar concept there called green drinks. And it was actually a local uh, way to essentially invest in sustainable companies, bakeries, and things like that. So I could see this is very powerful to get in uh, smaller businesses and uh, businesses starting out Wall Wall University to essentially look at establishing their roots in college place. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's too bad tax payment isn't legal in Washington. I know. <laughs> So nice, yeah. Makes it tough to compete. There's apparently there's a bill though that's going to be put forward next year to make it legal because it just came out in the Association of Washington Cities legislative agenda yesterday. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that was a lot of. So we partnered with the Association of Washington Cities because they saw kind of a need for this of how do we help elected officials really work with. Them entrepreneurs and less bring in Walmarts and more how do we sustain Main Street. Um, and that's really been my focus. I think there's a lot of efforts directed at that. Um, uh, that 
that part of it, like knowing in Starbucks that there's a pulp mill going in. So I was in Pomeroy four days ago working on the same project of how do we make our community more attractive. There's, there's a huge need for it. I think the guy up to date me has got a candy business, but he needs like $30,000 yeah. to take that next step, and he can't get it from the bank. And yeah, this would be a perfect fit for him. Yeah, and, so, and you hear story after story about how that company that now is bigger got that 10000 or got that 20000 I thought, man, hey, for that to be the reason to go out. I can't get my Starbucks yeah. cold brew. That would be terrible. <laughs> so, but that's kind of the, the concept behind it. And now for, and so we've seen now a couple of them have re So they re up the game 10, and now they're giving them another 20. And so it's, it, it really has taken its own legs on that element of it, but all we want to do is provide the structure so that any community in Washington because uh, it's only Washington specific um, legally, uh, but any community in Washington can just pick up the package and we'll have online tutorials, videos, uh, PowerPoints, I mean, kind of the work so that anybody can facilitate it. Yeah. Might be interested to learn more. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have contact info? I do. I, I'll hand you my card. I have a PowerPoint, okay. but it, it gets really formal and yeah. videos are a little old. So it's, <laughs> But I'll leave. I'll leave a couple of cards in my, yeah. in my, okay. in my contact. But awesome. uh, we can come down here. I have a couple of colleagues that work specifically with this project. So, yeah. yeah. Any other questions? I know you guys have a busy agenda. So, yeah. What are you doing tomorrow? Tomorrow? I don't know. I'm going to go to Wall Wall after this for a meeting, and then I have a chamber board meeting up at date tomorrow. Be neat to. What time? Noon. Work. Yeah. Let me. I'm gonna have to clear a few things, but. Are we going to do it another time? Yeah, if not, I'm coming back down to this Pomeroy. We're going to kind of go deeper into that one and then uh, basically throw up Garfield to Soap and uh, Columbia County. We're looking at kind of the same thing. Well, Dane's Columbia County. Mm -hmm. It's perfect for it. Yeah. It would be funny because we were just talking in Pomeroy how to be, uh, how we get how we get those all those workers to come live in Pomeroy because they're all going to go to Dayton. <laughs> so then they go to Dayton and help me. Well, for Columbia Paul? Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll leave a couple cards and uh, let me know. And really, like I said, it's really quick. And what we're finding is this seems to be a little better time. Things slow down a little bit. And so if it's one where you can pull something together, we're as, yeah, yeah. as ready as you, as you guys are. So. Be good. Yeah, you. I, I don't know what all your opinions are at this is I think we need to look deeper at because uh, it would provide an avenue for us to actually have incentives, business, startup money, whereas right now, uh, just with the state regulations, we're all pretty deadlocked here. Thank you guys for your time. Okay, any further thoughts or questions or anything? Okay. Thank you. Okay, I will go to the next uh, uh, next item, which is the LSMX tool. So, uh, uh, for those who uh, were not at the past meetings where we went over this, uh, the city uh, contracts with this company called Buxton Analytics, and uh, they help us identify retailers uh, that may do well in our area and then recruit them to the area. They also provide uh, data analytics uh, where we can run reports on customer trends for uh, businesses and uh, things like that. Uh, they created this new program, it's called the LSMX tool, and, it, and they gave us 25 licenses that we could distribute to businesses, and what it does is it allows you to strategically market yourself uh, to customers, so within their mapping portal, they actually have data that drills all the way down to where, it, let's say there's a family that likes McDonald's instead of Burger King or a gourmet restaurant instead of fast food it'll actually show that and aggregate the numbers and with your marketing budget you can basically tailor that to the demographic within whatever radius you set uh, and advertise directly to them uh, so that's what this tool is and we can extend this to 25 businesses and it just helps identify who the customers are where they live and then how to target uh, you could see the map right there uh, uh, where basically it allows you to figure out who, what type of clientele advertise to and target your social media uh, budget investment and so forth. Um, 
It, it's really helpful for the uh, businesses who have opted into this in other cities. Since we only have 25 licenses, the, uh, the big debate is how do we distribute the... Um, According to Cheyenne, who is our account executive over at Buxton, uh, she uh, listed a couple of options that they've seen where either it could be new businesses in a corridor, you could just target the most active and involved businesses, and that's a little bit subjective. Uh, you could work with the local area chamber to target certain ones or aggregate them to where, let's say, uh, five go of restaurants, five go of retail, Tailors. Uh, there's many ways to essentially cut the pie on this. It's just deciding how we want to distribute. I would say from an advisory uh, standpoint, I think where it could be of most use is uh, businesses along the uh, College Avenue corridor, smaller business, because frankly, uh, the Walmarts and Home Depots of the world uh, already pay to have another company do that for them, so they have enough money uh, to do that. Uh, so I was looking uh, for basically uh, direction from this committee on how we should distribute these licenses. I think it should be independent businesses, not the, the chain. Okay. Okay, so this is this is new to me. Um, what exactly does this license do for us? So what what it does is uh, you're basically able to study consumer behavior a little bit more, and I'd be able to show businesses who want to opt into this, uh, and it allows you to target <laughs> like if you're advertising on social media or through uh, the mail to certain areas, uh, which areas and which type of demographics best. Uh, fit your advertising. It just allows you to target marketing dollars uh, more strategically. Okay. Okay. It, it's all based on intelligent analytics that this company collects, and they refresh it about like once a month, so it's pretty accurate. Yeah, uh, Buxton has uh, training webinars, and then I figured out how to use it too, so I could I could help out on that. That was so one, that's another consideration is that <clears throat> people, you know, should be chosen based on their willingness and ability to really yeah. take advantage. Yeah. Of see somebody get a yeah. license and yeah. just yeah. Sit down exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, says, it says that you know if it, if they're inactive for three months. Yeah, it's the license is removed. It, well, well, that's just that's just a, a advice. From an option. Them. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, but if we, you know, if you don't find somebody who's going to use it, your feedback is going to be either negative or inconsequential on on the value of it. And so, in, in that regard, you know, I totally agree on the Main Street you know, local business, but if there is somebody like Walmart who really will dive into this, uh, with a, they have a little more horsepower to do it, that may not be bad. If you can find one, you know, large retailer in town, I mean, I know most of our Yeah, Walmart, Walmart, Home Depot, maybe have the greatest examples, but like yeah. the Andy's market. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. anybody that, that is willing to, you know, that has larger numbers that, that would give us a, a better kind of aggregate result on the data they, they get, you know, and how valuable it is. Uh, but then I agree, too. I, 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 I do think, I mean, we need to see that it's being used. Yeah. If it's not, it needs to be passed on to somebody else that will use it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why it'd be nice, like that last bullet, provided people that are willing to share 
you know, results so you know whether it's being used or not, or will Buxton provide you that information? Uh, they'll per they would provide that okay. since it's under our master account and we're basically donating the use of it to whoever, however we decide to do this. So from what I'm hearing, it sounds like the top criteria is for the majority of licenses. Uh, it should be to the smaller independent businesses. Maybe segregate one or two for a larger business if there happens to be one who would really uh, go head first into this. And then the third litmus test is that when three months they have to be using it to some sort of degree and that's not sitting there. When I said independent, I didn't differentiate between small or large, yeah. just that oh, okay. you are on a big corporate or chain restaurant. Can you say again where the information comes from? What's the source of the data that they get? Uh, basically from credit cards and uh, stuff like that. They just aggregate information all across uh, the country. It isn't like they tie it to name or anything, yeah, yeah, yeah. but, but they, they basically map your consumer expenditure patterns. And, and so, say Rogers Bakery does this, what, where does the information that they would get come from? Is it other bakeries? Is it other businesses that are similar just in this area or all over the country or what is the scope well, it, of the data? It's all across it's all across the country and area and then beyond that, if you're picking let's say certain mar markets to advertise for instance, it'll basically say like for instance if if we gave it to you, it would say at your bakery and that would basically highlight uh, the demographics and what areas that lean the most, that would basically shop at your bakery, for instance, and it would basically help guide you to advertise and directly toward those clients. Uh, or if there's like a growing market where maybe right now it's weak, but a like business in the area identify the newer growth market and the credit card numbers are showing that, it'll show that as well. Instead of shotgun in your yeah. marketing, you can be more targeted. And yeah. people that are more likely to visit your business. That would be very interesting. Yep. So my, my mm -hmm. whole thing is I just want to get this out to the door because we've had access to this for a, a couple weeks and I'd prefer to have people be using it by us. Don't wanna, I, I don't want to be the king of deciding the licenses. It's really this body. So, uh, mm -hmm. What, what I would like to see is some sort of advisory action on this. I'll, I'll summarize what I've maybe heard so far, and, and if uh, it jibes with what everyone's thinking, then maybe we can have a vote on it. Uh, independent businesses, you have to use it within the three months, uh, and then maybe segregate one or two of them toward your larger businesses who may uh, have the ability to dive into this as well. Uh, that's what I've heard today. Mm -hmm. So moved. Okay. Oh, could someone make a motion? I, I just did. Oh, okay. Make a motion. <laughs> we need a second. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Okay. And I will start getting that out to the businesses. Okay. Okay, uh, now we will hop into the events uh, section. Uh, so farmers market, uh, Weka County Fair, and then the following week when Smog were in the area, we had limited vendor attendance. However, uh, the customer attendance has stayed consistent. Uh, altogether, we I'd say per night we've been having around like three to four hundred people. Okay. So nice. we, we, we've been doing good. Excellent. Uh, and vendor attendance has uh, grown now, now that the smog is outside their area, it's uh, popped back up. Uh, so the last day of the market is October 26th. Uh, next year we're thinking of uh, switching up the time frame a little bit where it starts uh, the week of Memorial Day and then goes to later September. Because there were some vendors that just ran out of stuff to sell and now we're 
mm-hmm. we're growing in some things, but not exactly food, which is the premise of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're thinking May 31st to September 28th next year. So question, you know, we put the temporary power in. Yeah. Are you getting a feel for how you're going to want it to look for next year? Yeah, so uh, hopefully this will stay in the budget, I'm hoping. Uh, but the... Fr- our front parking lot out here is completely shot and it needs to be redone. Uh, the back part of the parking lot on this side we're going to leave alone, but at least this front part, we want to rebuild it and put electrical underneath it from the building and then have outlets actually uh, along near the parking lot in certain places and then put trees in as well because we've had a lot of vendors complain about how hot it is out mm-hmm. there. And when the parking lot was designed, it wasn't really designed to have a farmer's market. Right. So. Mm-hmm. I was just wondering if you're getting a feel for how you want it laid out yeah. more permanently. Yeah, I'm, th- I'm thinking we have outlets, frankly, on both sides of it up here. I think that'd be very helpful uh, because even for Christmas, which we'll get into in a little bit, but we want to move having the Christmas tree from back there to up front. We're going to run into issues, I found out with that, uh, because the wattage uh, wasn't exactly designed uh, for that. I, apparently, I found out when the city hall was built, it sounds like a lot of the wiring may have been uh, done in an interesting manner, so now we're dealing with it. As a not, not really by like an electric, electrical company, but at the time by council members, so mm-hmm. you get what you pay for, so. <laughs> <laughs> That was Larry saying you had to turn off your sign so yeah. you could light the tree. Because well, I, I, I found out last year we actually had to remove lights out of the parking lot lights out here to light up the Christmas tree. Otherwise, we'd basically hit the breaker. So, yeah, we have a electrical <laughs> issues we need to fix. Capacity issues. Yep. <laughs> So yeah, farm, farmers markets doing great, and we'll be doing an extra picture of it on the PowerPoint. So we're doing good. Uh, a couple of other events I wanted to put uh, to your attention. So Umpqua Bank is actually having a fall fest uh, in their parking lot. That will be October 13th from 1 to 4 p.m. And we permitted that, so uh, just be aware of that. Uh, Halloween, I I made a couple of posters, and it, if you're okay with it, I'll put it out there. And then also, if you could uh, talk to your neighboring businesses on College Avenue, this would be good. So the okay. police and fire department actually want to have like a maze for like a haunted maze for kids uh, for Halloween, and we're going to actually allow trick or treating on the municipal campus between three and six p.m. Uh, we're thinking that would be a good opportunity for the businesses to also allow trick-or-treating so I'll uh, send out like a little poster thing but I'm thinking for businesses that want to participate maybe print out the poster and put it on your front window or something because mm-hmm. I'm seeing it as a way to probably get more business if there's a lot of people going back and forth so then we mentioned to university and at first I was expecting an adverse reaction about that, but they actually seem supportive of it. So oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. So, so just for folks who have uh, College Avenue businesses, if you could get the word out. So you want like me to go on my blog yeah. and go to the different businesses and tell them about yeah. this? I, yeah, I, I was thinking for your part of the College Avenue, okay. if you could help with that. Yeah. Daryl, maybe if you could help with the central part here, and then I could talk to Jeff about the South End at 12. Yeah. Because Jeff from Andy's is yeah. on this board, too. So. Yeah, that's what he told me. Yeah. But yeah. I can do that. Okay. Well, well, yeah. I'll get. I will get pregnant and put this here, and then I'll send uh, these posters to you all, and then you could distribute the uh, to the various businesses you know okay. of. But I just yeah. think I just think it'll help with business and get more of a community feel if it's a whole corridor, and it will go from three to six p.m. 
Would this be something we'd want to set up that out on the sidewalk, or we want them to come into our business? I, I would say that would be up to the respective business. Uh, I know when they did that in Colfax, uh, they actually did have a little thing out on the sidewalk, and then that way people felt comfortable enough to go in the business. It really mm -hmm. depends on how your staff and uh, levels are. Yeah, yeah, it's a huge thing in Walla Walla and Dayton. Yeah. They give out a ton of candy, and the parents like it because... You know, they're not as worried about the kids getting something it's safe. that's yeah. not yeah. safe and stuff. So. Yeah. Okay, well, good. Okay. Well, we'll uh, move forward with this then. And then, I went, and then I went and leave time for a bigger event, which we're uh, trying to rehearse. And I, just, I just made up a real, like, dummy poster of this. Uh, so we're trying to do a larger Christmas event this year. We're trying to figure out what to, how to market it. And where I was previously at in Colfax, the name they gave it was Winterfest. I don't know if that sounds good here or if there, it should be another title. Um, I don't know if anyone has thoughts on that. I like Winterfest. I just like it because it fits on a poster. <laughs> so <laughs> other stuff gets tough. <laughs> oh yeah, and and then the other, and the other reason I'm asking early on is because what we're doing uh, this year is Walla Walla University is celebrating uh, their 125th anniversary, so they want this to be a joint celebration. Uh, so they have volunteered to uh, take on the marketing of this event. And then in addition, uh, I Cantori is going to do a concert here on the campus when we do the tree lighting. And they're providing some uh, cupcakes as well that night. And then nice. they also have uh, given money to do fireworks too. The university yeah. did? Awesome. Yeah. They can use bucks to figure out how to market it. Yep. <laughs> so, so is uh, everyone supportive of a winter fest title? Mm -hmm. or? Can we oh, can we have a motion on that? Is that not? I mean, does it matter? That may be trademarked. At I, various. We, we checked that okay. when I was at the city of Colfax, and it was pretty. Because so many people at Winterfest, it was just yeah. more of an open source title. It was if you use certain fonts with it. Public and domain. I made sure we used a public domain one. Mm -hmm. So if uh, you're all supportive of that, could we have an uh, action on this? Have a motion. Uh, sure. Yes. Second. Yes. Okay. okay. Hi. Okay, uh, and then just to go over the dynamics of this event, Lisa, I don't know if you would want to go over the schedule so far, because Lisa and Sean at the front office have been helping me with a lot of this, we're working with the university, and I included the schedule that uh, was printed. Okay. Yeah. I don't have oh. it from me. So let me go grab. I'll grab one of these. Sorry. Without having my calendar, what day is the dis is December 7th? Thursday. On Thursday. Thursday. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's not in this, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. Oh. Um, so basically what we're, what the plan is at this time um, is that at 5 o'clock we'll have the parade entrance line up on Birch Street. And I guess it's undecided right now whether we'll go all the way down to 12th and down from Birch to 12th. Oh yeah, I should. I should. Birch to College Avenue. I, I should talk about that because that's a little bit of a newer development. So the so the thing is with uh, College Avenue, and let me get to the map here. Uh, 
Uh, originally, we were thinking of having the lineup be on Birch Street, and then uh, beyond that, have it wrap around on 12th and go north on College to Whitman. However, in talking with the police department this afternoon, uh, they think that could be problematic from a staffing standpoint. Uh, I'm working with Rotary to get some volunteers to uh, block some of the smaller intersections, but one idea uh, that was mentioned, which I thought had some decent legs to it, is instead of uh, starting it around 12th and having it wrap around from Birch to 12th to College, uh, we could basically start it on Birch, uh, wrap it on 10th, and then turn on College, and take College from 10th all the way at Whitman, instead of going from uh, 12th to 4th. So I was wondering if, if everyone thinks that that's a good idea, or do you think uh, it would be important to start at the 12th? Uh, what would be the feedback that needs to be there if they're blocking traffic at that time? Well, well, that was the that was the that that was the big concern because in talking with Andy's, they wanted uh, traffic to be able to get to them. And if we were going to have the parade go from Birch to Twelfth to uh, College, uh, we could allow it on a limited basis until floats are going through, but that's going to be a pretty long period of time where stuff is going in and out of there. So since, that's why I'm thinking since the police mentioned this, maybe running on 10th isn't such a bad idea. How, how long would it be closed down, though? I mean, if you're on Birch, 12th can remain open, no? Well, Birch is just where folks are lining up right, at. It, right. it would peel on 12th. When we did this in uh, Colfax, because we had a similar lineup, typically to get everyone out of there, it ends up being about a 20-minute shutdown. Uh -huh. And the bigger concern is because we're doing it after 5, uh, if we're blocking off 12th Street, that has an effect on rush hour traffic around yeah. 5. 20 minutes at 5, 5.30 yeah. is a big deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, since I heard this idea about 10th, I actually think that's pretty decent. Yeah, I kind of kind well, and of another benefit uh, is having can, the parade go through the university grounds yeah. for viewing. True. That's a nice viewing area. Yeah, Maybe true. So, so the uh, Lisa was saying another benefit of this, too, is that if we ran it to Whitman, it would be going through the university campus, which is probably appropriate since they are ponying up the money to help do fireworks. <laughs> so, yeah. You get all the students. Yeah. And you could still use Birch all the way to 12 to line up yeah. and feed into 10, just yep. to bring them from both sides. True. Yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'll get, let me see, where is that? No, oh, that's not going to be. Oh, uh, well, I, we, yes, 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 yes. sorry. Um, yeah, let, we're just trying to get, um, Actually, I thought I had the map print. Actually, the printout on the map is on the We got it. it. Yeah. So I'll get it. We'll just I'll copy it. Okay. Map PC. Um, But yeah, the idea instead is to run it 10th to College up to Whitman and then disperse the traffic there. Uh, and then after the parade and folks line up here, uh, same time that's going in, we're trying to get some food truck vendors to be in the parking lot here. And then it would go from that uh, to where we have uh, the... Uh, well, at the parade, we would also need folks to uh, judge entries. Right. So I'm hoping some folks on this commission could do that. We were going to ask the mayor, the president McVeigh of the university, mm -hmm. and um, this committee uh, members to volunteer to do the, the judging. Um, and then we need some prizes. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, so that's our idea from there. So, so think about if you're able to serve on the uh, on the uh, judge and for the parade floats, because we are encouraging everyone in this parade to have to basically have lighted vehicles. So it's a lighted Christmas parade. Well, I would I would um, need to excuse myself from judging because I want to be. Oh yeah, that's I right. want the bakery to have <laughs> yep. a float. Nice. I have nice. I have visions yeah. already. I've just been sitting here thinking of what I want to do. So well, well, yeah. As long as you're participating in one way or another. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, after the after the parade went through. Then we would all gather here. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to open the bay doors on the fire department because hopefully we're going to have too many people to fit inside. Mm -hmm. um, and then Ecantori will do carols. They'll have cupcakes, birthday cakes, um, treats. And then Santa will be available in the fire department for kids. Um, after Ecantori is done, uh, then we'll congregate out to the front where we'll light the Christmas tree and then allow some time for everybody to either, we should be able to see the fireworks from here if people want to stay here, but we'll mm -hmm. allow time for them to go over to the Rogers lot um, okay. if they want to and do fireworks. Sounds wonderful. Yeah. And the fireworks will be at 730 and actually we'll have a bigger show than the July one because uh, Wawa University gave a thousand, but then Hayden Homes, the developer mm -hmm. of Homestead, uh, they gave three thousand. Oh, so, so we'll, we'll so, have a nice show yeah. then. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's the schedule right now. But that's what we're thinking of. Does anyone have any concerns, comments, thoughts, or? Okay. Oh yeah, is there any thoughts about uh, prizes or anything for the floats? Would anyone be willing to help uh, lead on the front locate prizes of some sort? I could do that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what, what type of a monetary value are we looking for? <coughs> I don't know. I, I, I mean, I mean, if it if it was to reflect what we did in Colfax, uh, we basically for first place it was a gift card or something that was valued at like a hundred. Okay. Second place was fifty. Third place was twenty five. So okay, that, that's somewhere. what was done up there. So we need a first, second, and third. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, if, unless anybody else wants to do it, I'm I'm happy to work on that. Okay. Great. Okay, great. Okay, if there's uh, if there's no more questions, uh, I will go on to the next thing uh, because the last exercise I'll wait till a follow on me then because we'll have to take more time with that. I just want to go over uh, business recruitment and uh, what's been going on as of late. And uh, some of the stuff I can't get too deep into because negotiations are ongoing, which is why I say, hey, it's a hotel or it's a restaurant, because we can't really uh, disclose uh, specific names. Um, so annexation-wise, uh, Mike McKiernan and Craig Christensen, who uh, own the property across from College Place High School, it's a pretty big swath of land. Uh, that was just annexed into cities. So that's uh, 260 acres. And they want to do a combination like shopping plaza thing with a, a park and then a combination of multifamily and single family homes. So nice. that's a pretty sweet spot yeah. with land to annex and be able to develop. So that's ongoing uh, right now, and they're starting to work on that. Uh, another exciting thing is the long vacant piece of property behind Home Depot that has actually moved. Uh, so there is a developer who is working on it and it's going to be a mixed use plot of property. Uh, so basically the western uh, third of it will be higher end multifamily apartments and then the front two thirds uh, will be a commercial where they're showing uh, room for a smaller grocery, a hotel and some stores. So. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, that woodland piece of property, after all these years, that was the site. Uh, Costco was going to go on years ago before stuff blew up. Uh, it looks like that's finally going to go, so that's good. The developer's been turning in plans, so it doesn't it doesn't look like it's made up. They're actually doing engineering, so uh, we have faith in that. Uh, the Govinda spot, that's being replaced by a newer uh, vegan restaurant called Fusion Cuisine. Uh, I just saw they had their new sign put up, so that's supposed to open in a couple of weeks. Oh. Yeah. That's replacing Govinda's. And basically, they'll have like a rotating menu of uh, vegan food daily. Huh. Yeah. Possibly different international. Yep. Yeah, all, all across uh, the world. It'll oh. be a rotating menu. Uh, the big piece of property behind Del Taco, there's currently two negotiations in play for two hotels back there. Uh, so we will see what's happening there. And then along the State Route 125 corridor, uh, there is also discussions on the uh, fast food and restaurants going along there and there the discussions are mature and uh, other thing is uh, that there's a local internet provider in the area where they actually want to move uh, from Walla Walla and essentially establish their headquarters here and they're looking at Rose Street uh, so we're uh, Emilio's properties they have over between like Damson and Lambert they're looking at some of that so st yeah stuff's moving along pretty uh, nicely uh, other thing to stay involved in is our comprehensive plan update so uh, we do updates to our comprehensive plan which is the guiding document for city programs economic development and growth roughly every eight years and now is where it updates it's uh mandated by the state of Washington. Uh, we'll be uh, giving out uh, flyers in the mail and online and everything to when we're having public workshops, uh, but we're really trying to take a, a deep uh, approach to this and really deal with questions regarding economic development, housing, as well as a plan for the corridor. Uh, one of the projects uh, that we're working on as part of that, and Daryl was at one of those meetings, was uh, some design standards for uh, College Avenue and design standards there's a misnomer with that that, that, that they're strict and uh, that you can only do prescribed things that's cities like Bremerton and Olympia where they go crazy with it. Uh, with our design standards that we're thinking of proposing, it's really a menu of possibilities where uh, the document basically has menus of certain things you can pick from uh, on newer construction so that way there's more of like a main street feel uh, because as properties redevelop along this corridor uh, to leave it to the free market Unfortunately, some people go a little too far with it, and we've had some interesting proposals come in where uh, right now, if let's say they were to go to fruition, uh, there really wouldn't be much to stop it because our codes are pretty lax, and it it would mess up the feel of our nice main street. So the design regulations, uh, they're going through planning commission and then uh, city council and then they're online. Uh, and we're working on those to really try to preserve the main street feel and make sure it feels like a main street. So uh, the other thing to be aware of our comprehensive plan is that uh, you have an urban growth boundary and that's where cities uh, work with property owners to figure out where to grow. Um, and in the past iteration of the comprehensive plan, we had Martin Airfield in the urban growth boundary. Problem with that being is we don't have the infrastructure to support it, meaning that our sanitary sewer is hardly uh, underground over there. So uh, it would be significant investment to 
do something over there. Uh, so we're currently working on plans uh, to, instead of the old strategy of working west, we'll be talking with residents about it, but instead look at going south along State Route 125 because you have a road that can accommodate truck traffic and we actually have infrastructure served down there. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind as all of the stuff is moving forward. So is there any yeah. questions on this? Okay. Uh, the, la the last item we aren't going to get to tonight because otherwise it will ta take too long. I really want to take a measured approach to it. As part of the comprehensive plan, uh, this commission is going to be intimately involved in our economic development chapter of the comprehensive plan and working on basically economic development strategy and what are we going to do like the next eight years in which uh, this next comp plan will take effect. So in your agenda packet, uh, it, the one that I emailed out yesterday, there is a survey that's been out for a while and we continue to get input on that. So please review that because the uh, next exercise we are going to go through at the next meeting is what's called a SWOT analysis. That's where uh, you analyze the strengths, the weaknesses, opportunities, and threats uh, for the local economy here in College Place. So we're going to take a deep deeper dive in the, at the next meeting. It's just we're already at six and we wouldn't be doing that exercise justice to be running through it. Uh, so we will have that be the next meeting. Uh, the, the other uh, question before I'm out of agenda items here is uh, as we move into next month, I, I heard from Jeff that because of his uh, schedule, Tuesdays are a little tough for him. What about the first Monday of each month? I can do that. Okay. Okay. I can see why not. Okay. Daryl? Yeah. Okay, well, I, I think starting next month and then from there on out, we'll have these the first Monday of each month at this time. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, we need a motion. Oh, okay. Uh, we need a motion for the day. <laughs> Uh, to change there. the date of the regularly scheduled meetings. Okay. Yes, I move. Yep. Um, no second. Okay. Can I have somebody else make the motion? I'm really sorry. Yeah. I've never made a motion yeah. before, so I don't know. I've All you have to do is, you can say okay. so moved. So moved. From, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Steve is not actually a voting member of the committee. It's ex officio, which means you three are the three voting members oh, here. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm yeah. sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just trying to make sure everything's <laughs> let, let, let Lisa knows that in and out to the code, so she keeps me out of trouble. So. <laughs> okay. okay. So, Kelly made the motion. I'll second. Thank you. Can I second? No? Okay. Just one. Sorry. That okay. Don't apologize. with four. You have a quorum. Okay. Yeah. You need you need three of the voting members. Okay. Yeah. It, it, and typically, when I just pre present stuff because it has no action, that's fine. It's just tonight we have a lot of action stuff. So. Okay. 